It's been just over a year since the release of The Last of Us Part 2, and its story remains as controversial as ever. Criticisms range from, at the most extreme, accusing the game's directors of blatantly pushing a political agenda through divisive and one-sided plot devices, to more straightforward critiques that the game is overly long, the story is logically incoherent, or even that the message of the game is boring and as simple as revenge is bad. Well, I disagree. I think The Last of Us Part 2 is a well-written, well-structured, and well-designed lesson in empathy, and here's why. Well, let's start at the beginning. The game commences by forcing you to watch the death of one of the most beloved characters in gaming, Joel. This utterly brutal scene certainly does not want for cruel violence and gruesome details of the inner contents of Joel's skull. Importantly, it serves to instill within the player a sense of bitter hatred toward the apparent antagonist of the game, Abby. Now this is where the criticism already begins, as some players felt cheated by the game's story, and they thought they were in for another adventure with Ellie and Joel. I'd argue this was a pretty naive assumption. We all know how the first game ended. Why on earth would Naughty Dog continue the story for any reason other than to see the consequences of Joel's fateful decision to save Ellie at the cost of a cure to the Cordyceps virus? Joel was adored by fans of the first game, myself included, and to my mind Drunkman and Co were brave to kill him off, brave to even make a second game. Narratively speaking, it's also totally logical because of Joel's murderous rampage at the end of game 1, and his death lights the fire in the player's stomach to get revenge against Abby. It makes perfect narrative sense. At this point of the story, Ellie and the player are absolutely aligned in their goal to get revenge. From here, the story continues to unravel. Ellie creates a gaping hole in the WLF in her single-minded aim of finding Abby, she puts both herself and her friends in grave danger on countless occasions, safe in the philosophy that the ends justify the means. Ellie kills countless of innocents in her pursuit, and for this reason the game is criticised. The argument essentially runs that her killing these soldiers, but not feeling any guilt about it, is a missed opportunity for self-reflective and in-depth moral quandary. Now, I understand the argument, but I think that people are somewhat missing the point. The game is teaching you, the player, empathy here, and Ellie's murderous and remorseless attitude is intended to make you feel guilty and create a sense of divide between the player and the character. It's like a car crash, you can't look away. Ellie failing to react is supposed to make you question the morality and justifiability of her actions. NPCs, upon finding a dead ally, will shout their name with obvious pain and distress. Kathy. Ellie will simply say something to the effect of fucker. Fuck, there's a lot of them. I'm of the opinion that the designers intended this and were using the medium of gaming to tell a story in which only games can. After all, if they went to the level of naming the characters individually with a set of 32 randomized names for each faction by applying to each NPC, it seems pretty questionable that they would then miss this glaringly obvious moral contradiction by accident. The answer is, it was on purpose. As things continue to escalate, characters around Ellie begin to question her, serving as proxies for the player's thoughts. Ellie makes questionable decision after questionable decision. She leaves Jesse to find Tommy alone, choosing instead to go after Abby, revealing her true priorities. The first half of the story comes to a head. Ellie breaks into the aquarium, kills an innocent dog, a pregnant woman, and a man who tried to protect her when Abby's friends sought to deal with any loose ends of Joel's death. The discovery of Mel's pregnancy, mirrored by that of Dina's, finally puts things into perspective for Ellie, and she breaks into a panic attack at the horror of her actions. You return to the theatre, Abby breaks in, kills Jesse, and seemingly Tommy, and the consequences of Ellie's reckless actions are quickly becoming all too apparent. The game cuts to black. Rewinds three days. Except now, you're Abby. And I remember at this point how betrayed, how angry and upset I felt with the designers 
the pure shock of knowing that I was going to have to play as the character that I hated, the antagonist. Except there was a lingering part in the back of my brain which was just receptive enough to the idea because of the scepticism it had successfully created towards Ellie's actions. That doubt made me willing, although at the time I didn't know it consciously, to empathise with Abby. This feeling was certainly intended by the designers, with Druckmann on the record as saying he wanted people to hate Abby immensely. Following this trend of empathy, you then play as Abby for the next three days. You come to understand her motivations, she lost her father at the hands of Joel, and similar to Ellie's loss of Joel at the hands of Abby, they both want revenge, and they want it for the same reason. The game introduces two characters designed to engender sympathy for Abby, Lev and Yara, and Abby sees the characters around her question what they did in Jackson, including the man that she loves and respects, Owen. Unlike Ellie, Abby has retained her revenge, and we see the resultant effects of this on her. We see the regret that her friends feel for killing Joel, and how it appears to make her question her own actions. It's foreshadowing what is to come for Ellie should she go through and kill Abby. The game is questioning revenge, and it's asking the player, is it really worth it? Abby, through her actions, appears to answer that with a no, and I feel that this is best represented by her seeking forgiveness in a quasi-religious act by putting herself at enormous risk to save Lev and Yara from the grips of the WLF. Despite the latter being her supposed faction, and the former being members of a faction she is supposed to hate. Abby grows to empathise with those that in theory she should hate, going out of her way to protect them and keep them safe, likely as she feels that her own soul is on the line. It's a very interesting character arc, and, in my opinion, is an answer to the question that the game poses, can Ellie or Abby come back from what they've done? I would argue that by the end of Abby's story with Levin Yara on the island, she has earned forgiveness for what she did through her actions and has relearnt the empathy that she had forgotten while she was blinded by hatred in seeking revenge against Joel. Abby then returns to the aquarium to find her friends killed at the hands of Ellie, and now again she seeks revenge. It's a vicious circle. Or so you think. She finds Ellie and co in the theatre, defeats her, and her final test is the opportunity to kill Dina and inflict the same level of pain on Ellie as she did to Abby when she killed all of her friends. Stop! She had nothing to do with this. She's pregnant. Good. Abby! Critically, in this moment, knowing that Dina is pregnant, Abby takes the moral high ground and completes her character arc, foreshadowing Ellie's story from here on out. Abby then, at this point I feel, proves that empathy is the antidote to revenge. From here, we cut to Ellie and Dina on a farm in the middle of Washington State, months after the events in Seattle, with their newborn son. Ellie is clearly struggling to come to terms with what happened and seemingly has PTSD from Joel's death. Tommy shows up and informs Ellie of Abby's location, but Dina pleads with her and the player prays that Abby won't go. Dina gives her an ultimatum that if she does go, that Dina will not be there if Ellie even returns. To the deep regret of the player and Dina, she makes the decision to go after Abby again. Damn the consequences. Ellie leaves the farm and begins her quest. She burns through another faction, this one clearly engaged in the slavery of human beings, justifying their murder intrinsically to the player. Sustained by her hate and little else, Ellie reaches Abby, releases her and Lev, and all the while a clear internal conflict is continuously stirring within her. She says, I can't let you leave, to which Abby, having been through this before, responds, I'm not doing this. Ellie then forces her hand by threatening Lev's life, and they begin to fight. All the while, the player is reluctant to even press a button, not wanting to hurt or kill Abby, and wishing Ellie would realise just how wrong she is. The point comes where you think you're about to kill Abby, and Ellie releases her, lets her go, and utters the words, 
just take him. I think by this she means the pain and suffering of Joel's death, and not literally Lev. She's letting go of her hate and moving on. She's finally learnt to empathise with Abby. More than this, when she returns home, having lost three of her fingers in the fight, the level of loss really starts to kick in. Jesse is dead, Tommy is injured for life, Dean is gone, and she can no longer even play the guitar, the last connection that she had to her father, Joel. The game technically ends in a sort of open way, with Abby walking into the distance, but the parallels of Ellie's and Abby's revenge tales are undeniable, and if Abby's journey is anything to go by, then Ellie can come back from this. She too took the moral high ground, and chose not to kill Abby, and will now seek forgiveness from Dina. The game takes a very realistic standpoint in displaying the brutal consequences, but does not lack hope, and I like this message. Yes, actions have consequences, but you can come back from them, if you remember the importance of empathy. Thank you very much for watching my video. I'd also like to make a special thank you to my patrons and supporters. If you want to see more content like this, then obviously you can subscribe, and also my Patreon is linked below. So, other than that, until next time, see you later.